In this lecture, we're going to look at the reaction mechanisms for the nucleophilic substitution reactions of the haloalkanes. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to use curly arrows to give the mechanism for the SN1 reaction, use curly arrows to give the mechanism of the SN2 reaction, and explain the dominance of an SN1 or SN2 mechanism for a particular haloalkane. So in this lecture we're going to look at the final two reaction mechanisms that you're expected to remember. And we did three in the section on alkenes, uh, we're going to do two more now. And both reactions refer to the nucleophilic substitution reactions that the haloalkenes undergo. So if we just remind ourselves what those three reactions were, remember if the nucleophile was a hydroxide, we produced an alcohol. If it, the nucleophile was a cyanide ion, we'd form the nitrile. And if the nucleophile was an alkoxide, we'd form an ether. Okay. And that was. KOH dissolved in water, KCN dissolved in ethanol, and uh, alkoxide dissolved in ethanol. And the mechanism is the same for all three reactions. But there's a choice of two mechanisms for each reaction. And which mechanism is used depends on whether or not your haloalkane is a primary, secondary, or tertiary haloalkane. It doesn't depend on the nucleophile, but it depends on whether or not you've got a primary, secondary or tertiary haloalkane. So I'm going to show you the two mechanisms and explain which type of haloalkane undergoes which type of mechanism. So the first mechanism is known as an SN1 reaction. And SN1 reaction stands for a uh, first order nucleophilic substitution. So, kind of working backwards, first order nucleophilic substitution, that's what SN1 stands for. Okay, so let's look at what happens there. So here's our haloalkane with the polar CX bond. And in the first step, what happens is the CX bond breaks, undergoes heterolytic fission to form a carbonium ion and a halide ion. Now this reaction is slow. This is the rate determining step. And as you see, the nucleophile does not appear in the rate determining step, just the haloalkane. So the rate equation for this would be the rate equals k and it would just depend on the, the concentration of the haloalkane, okay, not the nucleophile. So it would be a first order reaction. Once this formed, the second step, the nucleophile then attacks a carbonium ion to produce the product. And this is a very fast reaction. Okay, so this is the rate determining step on which the kinetics depend. So, what sort of haloalkane undergoes an SN1 reaction? Well, what we find is that tends to be tertiary alkenes and most secondary, sorry, tertiary haloalkanes and most secondary haloalkanes. And that's because, just like the Markovnikov rule for the alkenes, the presence of alkyl groups stabilizes this carbonium ion. So let's say it was a tertiary alcohol, and we had three alkyl groups attached. They're all feeding in the electrons to stabilize this carbonium ion. And so 
this hangs around long enough for the second reaction to happen. If you had a primary monohalo alkane and these were all hydrogens, then this would be too unstable and would immediately just break back down, reform re, re, uh, the halo alkane. So the rule is that tertiary and many, in fact most secondary monohalo alkanes tend to undergo the SN1 reaction because we've got the alkyl groups that can stabilise the carbonium ion or the carbocation. Both terms are acceptable. Okay, so if you're a little primary monohalo alkane, you can't go via the SN1 reaction. So what do you do? Well, the primaries undergo a SN2 reaction, which stands for a second order nucleophilic substitution reaction. And I'll show you the mechanism for that. So, what happens is that as the nucleophile attacks the carbon atom, the CBR bond starts to break. And you form this transition state in which the nucleophile is just coming in and the halogen are just going out, but they are both still attached to the carbon atom. Okay. And then subsequently this quick quickly changes into your final product. But this is the slow step and the slow step forms, involves both the nucleophile and the halo, halo alkane. So the rate in this case would depend on the concentration of the nucleophile and uh, I'm just writing this silly thing as standing for the halo alkane. So it's a second order reaction because the slow step involves both the nucleophile and uh, halo alkane. So primary alcohols, sorry, primary halo alkanes will undergo an SN2 reaction. Tertiary halo alkanes will undergo the SN1 and most secondary will undergo SN1, although some of the secondary can also undergo SN2. And what it depends on is how big the alkyl groups are attached to the carbon atom. Okay, If you've got some very big alkyl groups, what you actually find is that this area here is so crowded, the nucleophile can actually get in to attack the carbon. It comes in from the opposite side from the halogen. So if instead of having H, an H here, you had a big, say, butyl group, you'd find that this area was so crowded with atoms that there's not enough room for the nucleophile to get into attack. I know it seems a very mundane uh, explanation of how a chemical reaction doesn't happen, but you actually get this thing called steric crowding. It just means there's not enough room for the reagent, in this case the nucleophile, to get in an attack. So what we find is so steric crowding prevents tertiary and most secondary haloalkanes from proceeding via this mechanism. Okay, So SN1 is for tertiary and most uh, haloalkanes because they can't undergo the SN2 because of steric crowding and uh, they have a nice stable carbocation, whereas SN2 is for the primary haloalkanes and just the very small secondary uh, haloalkanes. So by now you should be able to use curry arrows to give the mechanism of either the SN1 or the SN2 reaction. And for any given haloalkane, you should be able to explain the dominance of either the SN1 or the SN2 mechanism.